This is the 2016 free response question number one. I'll put a link to the release questions below. Um, one thing to note in these videos, I'm going to probably spend more time explaining the physics of the problem and less time writing out detailed explanations. So um, if this were the actual test, you would want your explanations to be a little more detailed than what I'm going to do. Um, although if you were to write down everything I said, then that would be plenty of detail. So the first question is asking for the um, free body diagram. They do want you to draw it where the force is actually exerted. And we'll do this whenever we're dealing with torques. And since there's some rotational motion here, you know there's got to be some net torque. So let's go ahead and do it. We'll do the easy one first, and that's going to be the force of gravity. Force of gravity is always through the center of mass and always straight down towards Earth. So we'll draw that as such. Force of gravity straight down. Um, the next one is going to be the normal force. Now the normal force is pushing up perpendicular to the surface. And it is point of contact would be right here where it's actually touching, right? So the surface is touching and it's going to go up perpendicular. Notice that it should travel through that center of mass. The, the, com the component will go through the center of mass, the normal force. And then the last one's going to be friction. Uh, it's the wheels rolling down the hill. Friction is going to obviously be up. And it's also going to be touching the wheel right here. And it's going to be parallel to our surface. And we should label that. So this would be our force of friction. This looks like the free body diagram. All right, the next question is asking what causes this to rotate, essentially, a change in angular velocity. So for this, you're going to be looking for net torques. OK, so change in velocity. Remember, torque, net torque is equal to I alpha. So the ang change in angular velocity is our alpha. So we won't basically going to look for a net torque. They're asking about the center of mass with respect to that. So that would be our axis of rotation. And you can see that's clearly what's happening here. So the first thing we're going to do is eliminate gravity because that's acting on the axis of rotation. So there will be a zero radius when we think about our torque. Right? That's force perpendicular to radius. So that would be zero. The normal force, notice that this is going parallel to our center of mass. The, or the radius, I guess, of the center of mass. So this would be also zero. So there's no net torque due to the normal force. Uh, friction, on the other hand, is clearly perpendicular. And you only need one component, but this would be 100% perpendicular. So yep, we're going to go with friction. So friction exerts a net torque because there is, uh, or it is acting perpendicular to the axis of rotation, right, the center of mass. You probably want to mention a little bit about the normal force um, and how it doesn't exert, and even gravity, you could mention that as well. And I'd probably do that if, uh, if I spent time doing that. All right, next question is we're going to go ahead and figure out the linear acceleration. So we're going to try to figure out the linear acceleration as this is traveling down the ramp. OK, so we have our free body, right? We have our F gravity. I'm just going to draw it here. F gravity, our Fn, and our friction going this way. Um, so remember, for ramps, we want to rotate our axis of rotation. When we do that, we're going to have a component of gravity. So I'm going to redraw this as just x's and y's. We're going to have an f normal like this. We're going to have friction going this way. And then we're going to break this down. So this would be our mg sine theta. This would be our mg cosine theta. OK, I'm sure you've done this many times. Uh, when we sum up our forces, we're going to get mg sine theta minus friction equals ma. 
Okay, um, now notice in the problem they do want your answer to be in terms of m theta physical constants. So you do want to make sure that your answer is in terms of that. Um, so notice here we have friction, which is not. Now in the problem they do tell you friction, so they say the force of friction is 40% of the force component directed opposite to friction. So that means, in other words, friction is equal to 40% or 0 0.4 times the component opposite of it. So 0 0.4 mg sine theta. So we'll just go ahead and substitute in and we'll get mg sine minus 0 0.4 mg sine equals ma. Okay, m's do cancel and we could simplify this. So our answer should be 0 0.6 g sine theta equals a. All right, last question, letter C, let me find it. Um, all right, this time we're gonna have a block of ice going down the ramp. So our ice is gonna look like this, and it says negligible friction. So in other words, in our FBD, we're gonna have simply mg sine theta uh, and then of course our normal and mg cos, but no friction. So the first part of the question is, well, which object reaches with more speed? So hopefully you can see that clearly the block is gonna reach with more speed. And there's two reasons for this. They wanted you to explain it in terms of forces. They want you to explain it in terms of energy. So with forces here, uh, hopefully you can see that there is no component of friction. So since there's no opposing force, then this would be the only force acting on it. That would be the only force pulling it down the ramp. Okay, so how could we explain it? Well, with negligible friction, the only force acting is the component of gravity, which is, well, you can write it, mg sine theta. Okay, so since there's no opposing force, opposing force of friction, it will have a greater acceleration, the block. Okay, and therefore a greater V. Okay, again, if this is a real test, I might spend a little bit more time explaining that. All right, question two, uh, what about in terms of energy? Well, in terms of energy, they both have potential at the top right? But this block has only kinetic at the bottom. So it starts with all potential, has only kinetic down here at the bottom. Um, whereas with the wheel, if we go back to our wheel, or my wheel picture, the wheel up here, there's potential at the top. And down at the bottom, there's two kinetics. There's your translational or linear kinetic, and there's your rotational kinetic. So how would we explain that? Well, with the block, all the potential energy turns into linear kinetic or translational kinetic. Okay, with the wheel, uh, the UG is distributed or split between translational KE and rotational KE. So, well, there's going to be less translational. Okay. What does that mean? Well, it'll th therefore be slower. 
All right, so that concludes the first question.